Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is the Heraclitus Paradox, also known as the River Paradox, or can you step into the same river twice? Let's take a look. So, the Heraclitus Paradox, also known as the River Paradox, is simply the question, can you step into the same river twice? Twice. Given that the water in the river is always changing, how can the river you step into today really be the same river that you stepped into yesterday? While this paradox is often attributed to Heraclitus, it is more accurate to say that Heraclitus inspired it. Heraclitus was a pre-Socratic philosopher. We have only a few fragments of his writings. Most of the biographical stories about him are likely fiction, possibly invented by Diogenes Laertius, and there is reason to believe that at least some of those who reacted to his work were really responding to the more extreme framing of his position by his student Cratylus. This confusion is compounded by Heraclitus' paradoxical and very ambiguous style, which many take as a purposeful demonstration from him that words or traditional prose cannot sufficiently capture his views, and that his ambiguity is purposeful and illustrative. Others, including Aristotle, argue that his style is simply weak and unclear. Regardless of the reason, this style makes Heraclitus challenging to interpret. Heraclitus held the view, sometimes called the unity of opposites, as best we can understand him, arguing that things are sometimes the same thing and the opposite of each other. Not only is his prose confusing, some of his positions seem confusing as well. But the river paradox derives from one such comparison and an example of what Heraclitus means by the unity of opposites. Heraclitus gives several examples of this. So a road that goes both uphill and downhill can be opposites, but at the same time the same thing. A road going uphill and a road going downhill are opposites of each other. One is difficult to climb, one is easy to go down, etc., but they could in fact be the same road seen from different perspectives. The same seawater can be harmful or deadly, or it can be life-giving, depending on if you're a fish or a human. Or, the relevant quote from our paradox today, people step into the same river and different waters flow around them. So this originally derives from kind of this idea of the unity of opposites, that there can be things that are at the same time the opposite of each other. Heraclitus may not have viewed this as concerning, but some modern philosophers do. The paradox has been explicitly framed as follows by modern philosophers, not by Heraclitus at all. The river has water in it. Anyone that steps into a river twice steps into different water. Therefore, anyone that steps into a river twice steps into a different river. In other words, you cannot step into the same river twice. So basically what this is saying is whenever I walk into a river, I'm stepping into a set of water, but when I walk into that river again, the water that I'm walking to into is different, because the water I walked into the first time has flowed all the way downstream, and I'm stepping into different water, and so I'm stepping into a different river, because the river is nothing but the water in it. The first two premises seem accurate, a river seems to be made of water, and as long as the river is flowing, you'll step into a different body of water each time you step into that river. The question is then, why are you not stepping into a different river? Because it seems our intuition is that you can step into the same river twice. So, we might avoid the paradox by denying premise one, i.e. claiming that a river is not identical to the water in it. Maybe a river is more than just the water in it. Maybe it is the banks of the river, too. Though this raises the same questions that hole linings do. Check out our video on what are holes for more on that. Uh, for example, uh, what is the river made of? Most would say it's made of water, not dirt. You don't really think of the water as being, or the river as being made of dirt. So then how can the banks be part of the river? Because the banks are made of dirt, not water. And how far do the banks of the river extend? If the banks erode quickly enough, or we wait long enough, the basic question of is it still the same river emerges. If you have a fast flowing river that's quickly eroding the dirt that's right along the side of its banks, it seems like you're still not stepping into the same river because those banks are different than they were initially even if you count dirt as part of a river. 
Now, one might also argue that the water is merely a temporal part of the river. This is, comes from people that believe in things like temporal parts in the same way that things can have spatial parts. They can also have temporal parts under this view. One might move across the river in space and find it deeper at one point than another and made up of different water in one point of the river than in another. Similarly, one can move across the river in time and find different water at one temporal part or another. One problem with this view is it seems to fail to explain change. It seems that a river is the kind of thing that changes, but an object with merely different temporal parts seems not to change, but rather be static. Or at least we need a better explanation of what we mean by change in a world with things like temporal parts. Now, one might instead object to premise two by arguing that the type token distinction is a problem here. Check out our video on the type token distinction for more on that. Basically, a river needs to have a type of thing in it, water, not a specific token of that thing, the specific water in the river at this exact moment. So when you step into the river, you do not step into different water, because what matters for the identity of the river is that you step into the same type of thing, water, as opposed to the specific token of this water. If the river were full of acid or magma, you might not think it's the same river because the type of thing it had in it has changed, but it doesn't change simply because the token of the thing in it changed. Now, one might object to such a conception, arguing that when we're talking about the identity of a thing, we're generally talking about token identity. If you say, I saw the same dog walk past, it doesn't seem that you mean I saw two different animals that were both dogs walk past. Rather, it seems like you mean I saw the same token of a dog walk past. Similarly, when someone says that they walked through the same river as opposed to twice, it seems different from saying, I walked through two rivers. It seems like they have token identity in mind when they're saying the same river. They walked through that particular river, not just water in general. Further, one might be concerned about rivers that meet the sea and are more or less brackish depending on the tides. It seems like the type of thing, salt versus fresh water, can actually change within a river. And you could be walking through a different type of thing, but still think that it's the same river. What do you think? Can you step into the same river twice? Or are rivers always in sufficient flux that trying to identify the same river over time is a fool's errand? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at Carneades.org. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and as always, stay skeptical, everybody.